Hey, this is Amy with Flower Moxie, and I'm excited to do this. It's gonna be dry, fresh, more of a boho, dusty vibe, something that's very popular right now on our site and in weddings. Uh, but one thing that I'm really excited about is this container right here. I cannot take credit for this. Uh, someone on my team, Abigail, she did a styled shoot, and this is um, $1.50, and this is actually like a silverware uh, drawer organizer. And they also had this, and I think this was like, I don't know, 75 cents. I think she said this was a dollar, a dollar 50. So this is what we're using to build our arrangement in. And for my mechanics, I'm going to use chicken wire. Uh, for her styled shoot, she used foam, and foam is nice because you stick it in and it stays, but it's kind of hard to find since the pandemic. It's not eco-friendly the stems can't drink as well. And so I try to use chicken wire as much as I can. Because this is so shallow, I didn't really know going into it if I would be able to, uh, but I did a little practice round and it, and it worked just fine. So what I had to do though to, to create some, some structure so these stems don't just topple out because it's so short and shallow is I layered in my chicken wire. So this is probably, I don't know, 12 by 12. And so I basically made a burrito and then I come in and I, I squeeze the inner chicken wire so it, um, so the stems can catch a little bit easier. I didn't want just like a hollow tube. And so I did this. So there's a few layers to it. If I just made like one little tube, um, I don't think it would catch as well. So I place it into this tray and you always wanna take down your mechanics. So every time I have skipped this step, thought I was being cute and saving time, uh, you know, it did not help me out. So you always tape in your mechanics with waterproof floral tape. Okay, so I'm going to tape in my mechanics. I'm using green waterproof floral tape. I feel like that holds up better than the clear. The clear works, it's just not my preference. And you always have to have a dry surface. There we go. I'm just gonna tear this with my hand. And then you put your water in afterwards. So if you're DIYing your wedding flowers, this is something that you can do the week before. Your wedding week is gonna be uh, very intense. So working ahead, I always recommend. As a florist, I'm always trying to kind of figure out how I can um, work ahead because you, know, you only have a few days to build with fresh flowers. Oh man, I twisted that piece. I need to do a... Okay, so I've taped in these mechanics. It's not going anywhere and I'm gonna add some water. Okay, so the one negative thing about the, the chicken wire is you really need to fill the water to the top when you build it. So you'll build this about one to two days before your event. And then when you transport it, it's gonna be really easy to spill this water in your car. So what I, what I would do as a florist is I build everything with it completely full with water. Before I transport it, I tip the water out. I take a little, um, you know, what's it called? Little watering can to refill uh, my, my vases. And she, she did like multiples on the table. So on a long table, she had this in the center and then she had these two little guys kind of flanking the sides. And, um, you know, she used foam. It really provided a lot of flowers, so I think, these work together so well. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see, I've got some cushion flowers, terracotta carnations, white carnations. I have some Lynette Cremones, which are really nice. So if you're going for that boho vibe, um, these have a fantastic color and they're available all year round. So I'm gonna start out by getting my larger pieces in. I'm also mixing in some dried elements and those are very large, so I'll want to figure out my placement on those pretty, pretty quick into it. So I think I will start with this. And I love these palm spheres. I think they're so cute. And if you're noticing, I'm kind of putting them at different angles 
because what I don't want to do is have like two little matchy twins. And this is where the foam is a little bit easier to work with. But once we start building, you know, these, these flowers will catch. And I have a Lazy Susan so I can turn it around. Here are some quicksand roses. I reflex this guy, but I actually got these today because I forgot to order them in advance. So I was kind of afraid they wouldn't be open enough. But the great thing about quicksand roses is they are really good about blowing out quickly, which often terrifies my customers. They'll email in and they're like, oh my gosh, like my quicksands have blown in day one. And that's okay. That's just the nature of this particular rose. So if that happens, and it probably will, um, then don't be alarmed. So yeah, I'm just kind of coming back and filling in with some texture. You might have to cut that shorter. We're gonna have some baby's breath to cover up our mechanics. Let me turn this around so I can see it. We have this really nice piece of bleached Italian ruscus. And I always think this bleach looks so good um, with this like dustier, peachy palette, and especially when it's up against these natural elements like this palm. So see how I've layered this in? It, um, this is creating stability. The more stems I add, the easier this chicken wire is to work with. Chicken wire is always a little bit hard to get started because the stems and stuff will shift around, but the more volume that you add, um, that, that problem goes, corrects itself. My less expensive flowers, like these cushion flowers, I really like, they have nice texture, but I also utilize them uh, for support reasons. So I'm putting them down low and letting them cover the mechanics and um, providing layers of texture for visual interest. But you know, the cushion flower isn't necessarily my showstopper and that's okay. So uh, I find that like all these flowers have a really great purpose. And if I'm just using those like luxury bougie flowers, they kind of become less and less important. So I'm reflexing this uh, quicksand rose. <sighs> Abigail uh, brought these in and so she buddy taped them. Uh, these were really thin stems. Sometimes on dried, they can break really easily. So she used this for a styled shoot. She's lending them to me to do this tutorial. And what she did here was buddy tape it to a hardier stem. So, you know, it will be covered once you have all your flowers, but that's something you can do and remember when it comes to dry, just because they do have more delicate stems. And again, Typically not like a huge baby's breath fan, but I do like it with a bleachier palette and it is so nice to have to fill in the gaps and just cover your mechanics. Work with some of this pampas grass. We're just gonna put this whole big piece just right in there. Um, this stuff is incredible. It's kind of sheddy. So if you don't like the shedding, get some cheap uh, like 1980s Aquanet, spray it down lightly with some hairspray and it will keep it from shedding. Um, I will use the entire piece if I'm doing a large installation, like something like an arch or ceremony arrangement where you need that volume and this length. But this is really hard to work with in a bouquet or in a centerpiece, but it's very easy to cut it down, which is what I'm gonna do. So I kind of find where I want it to be like the length that I want, 
and ultimately I cut it in half. And this still is not unusable because you can just kind of floof and zhuzh it and it looks like it was the top to begin with. And then I have a much more manageable piece. Okay, I have so much good stuff to work with. This is the last tutorial of the day, so like everything's up for grabs. And when building this, it's important to get down and make sure you don't have any gaps. When, when I'm standing up looking down, I'm not gonna notice that, but the reason why it's important is because when someone's sitting at your table, they might be able to see it. So it's just another way of looking at that centerpiece. And sometimes I'll get like a, I have like a little box that I use that I will set on my design table and put my Lazy Susan on top of that. That way I can get a little bit closer to it. Okay, let's fill out this center. It's taking too long. So if you notice, I'm cutting this a little bit shorter because I'm trying to get that stability within this, within this arrangement. I love this so much. So if you ever talk to Natalie, who is on our team, this is her favorite flower. I don't care if you have an all white wedding, she's going to recommend a Lynette Cremone because she loves them so much. Um, but the good thing is we're gonna start selling them in bulk and they're available all year. Okay, let's get some bleachy items. Oh. So this is a this has a blunt piece. I can bury it. It's just a way to stretch your product. Um, I can cut this apart and just make it go a little bit further. This ruscus, bleach ruscus, it is not cheap, so I try to get as much use of it as I can. So I'm cutting apart this cushion just to basically find holes and place it and nestle it down, down into the arrangement. And that's why it's so nice to just have these more inexpensive items uh, just to, for coverage. Especially, like we're not using greenery in this arrangement, so a lot of times I depend on the greenery to cover up my foam, cover up my chicken wire, and so that's why it's good to have maybe some more inexpensive elements. Ooh, nice. This I'm loving. This is bleached tinted leather leaf. And I will just warn you now, if you order a bunch of dried bleached things, uh, they smell absolutely terrible, especially like right out of, the, like when you open that box, oh my gosh, I can't describe it. It's, I don't know what kind of chemical process they put this through, but the, the cool thing about this bleach stuff is it's almost like rubbery. It doesn't shatter, where if you were just to hang it upside down and let it dry, it would just completely shatter on you. So, I don't know what they do but it smells terrible, but it does dissipate. So if I get a lot of bleach stuff in, I like air it out outside. Okay. Hmm. What do I wanna use? I have way too much fun stuff to pick from. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna wait till the end to put in my thinner stinned items. That's always kind of like the way I finish off my arrangements. but I'm pretty pleased at how this um, chicken wire is catching. Every time I do a foam, like sometimes I, I'm not a purist, sometimes I have to use foam, especially like when doing large arrangements. Um, but I always know I'm gonna, you know, hear about it. So I try to use the, the chicken wire as much as possible. This might be a little bit awkward, so probably gonna change the placement of that. Yep. P 
people always ask like, how do you reflex the rose and it doesn't split? If it starts splitting on you, it's too fresh. Roses that reflex the best are um, old ones. And I can't say this is old because I just got them this morning, but some varieties do reflex better than others. Toffee, toffee is always, always feels old, very soft. Quicksand's kind of the same, but makes designing with them nice. The sad thing is when you get quicksands and they don't open. <laughs> Okay, let's start bringing in our nicer, more luxury flowers. These are ranunculus. I would say about half of them I had to wire. Sometimes I have to almost wire the whole gaggle. This one had like a nice curve, but because it had so many like little notches, it didn't want to be wired. I'm okay with a little bit of curve. Um, the problem is, is when they bend under their own weight, that's where they definitely have to be wired up. And it doesn't make it a bad ranunculus, it's just the, the nature of it. So I've got some brown lysianthus over here. I think this this bunch was on its way out when I bought it, but um, it was the last brown Lizzie that they had. And brown Lysianthus is really good about being reflexed and it's not cheap. So I try to get the most for my money with it. And that means that reflexing it, it's going to get more show and open it out open it up more. And you think it's like a really delicate, sensitive flower, but it handles it just fine. So that opens it up a smidge and then I can start adding it to my arrangement. I will say with Brown Lizzie, I, it comes in different colors. So if you don't like color variation, this is not the, the flower for you. Um, this looks more sandy but oftentimes it's more of like a plum burgundy. So it does have some variation. I think all of the variations work for this type of palette though. Yeah, this, this bunch has seen better days, but for tutorials it works just fine. This side is mostly finished, so I'll finish out this, the other side. I'm reflexing the white too. If you order Lysianthus, sometimes it will come in just like flat as a pancake, so you do have to work your product sometimes. Okay, so to finish this off, I'm gonna add these last thin little pieces. I always wait till the very end. So we've got some bleached bunny tail, we have some pink happy flower. I wait till the very end to add these just because they're so thin stemmed and those stems can, can snap. I have a little bit of bleached baby's breath and I'm just going to backfill a little bit of that to give it a little bit more texture and embellishment. And the cool thing about all of this dried bleached is you can just do really nice hand placement. Like it doesn't have to reach down into the water. So that's really nice at the end. You can just kind of decide where you want those little floofs to be.
see how that stem broke pretty easily? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> At this point, I'm pretty much done, but I'm just looking for a few opportunities to add um, just a little bit more of this dried. Okay, so this is the centerpiece that I created in the silverware uh, organizer. Uh, this was purchased at the dollar store for about $1.50. I did not use greenery. I probably used about uh, about seven carnations total, combining the white and the terracotta. I used about one, two, three, four to five quicksand roses, three cremones, um, probably about three cushion flowers, and mainly it was just layering it in and then quite a bit of dried elements. But when you break it down, there's just like a few of each individual item. It's mainly back filling. You keep layering in the texture. I see things low to create stability. I raise up the kind of the nicer, fancier things. Um, this is just a softly organic, not extremely asymmetrical, but definitely not uh, symmetrical, which is what I think works for the vibe. Um, I used a lot of products that I cut down. So like for instance, this really nice um, tinted bleached uh, leather leaf. I took ma mainly one stem and cut it apart. I did the same thing with one piece of pampas. I used just like a handful of the happy flower and probably three palm spears. So I did this in chicken wire. You can use foam chicken wire. Just make sure you tip out the water before you transport it. Um, and yeah, I really love it. it. Works really, really nice for a rectangular table. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if this has helped you. That helps us build our channel so I can create more tutorials and more education for you. If you want to learn more or buy your flowers from us, visit flowermoxie.com. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.